Well, it's time now for me to introduce our keynote speaker, Tara Magalski. Tara, who works and resides in New York City, will be sharing her story of loss and her own personal battle with depression, which occurred during the time of her prime period of her acting career. Tara is a certified holistic health counselor, a motivational speaker, TV personality, and author of the book, Let Your Mess Be Your Message, which will be released in 2016. Tara will also be sharing her message of hope, hope that depression is treatable and suicide is preventable. Please join me in welcoming Tara Magalski. Hello, everyone. Well, that's tough to follow. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me here today to tell my story. I'm honored to be here. So seven years ago, I was on top of the world as an actress. I had three movies out, one of which was in theaters. I was young, healthy, and the dreams that I had from when I was a little girl were finally coming true. From the moment that I came out of my mother's womb, I knew that I wanted to be an actress. So when my career started to take off, I felt unstoppable. I was confident, assertive, and ready to take on the world. And then my mother died tragically in her sleep. And she didn't just die from old age or from battling a sickness. She died from a lethal combination of pharmaceutical pills. As you can imagine, this was a complete shock to my entire family because my mother was a very successful businesswoman who had just recently retired from her position as a deputy commissioner of social services. She had worked with senators and New York's Governor Pataki, and she really contributed to social welfare reform. She was an advocate for children, and she dedicated her life to making sure that children were safe and they were kept out of the system. She was my inspiration. She taught me how to be a leader, how to stand up for myself, and how to stand in my power as a woman. But she would come home at night and take pills to numb her pain. When I got the call on the morning, uh, 8 a.m. on the morning of November 20, I'm sorry, May 27, 2008, from my brother-in-law that my aunt had found my mother dead, my body went into an uncontrollable physical response. I actually began throwing myself backwards onto the floor repeatedly and standing up and doing it again and standing up and doing it again. And I believe it was just my morning manifested physically and my body went into shock. And from that day and for the next two years to follow, the pain and confusion of what was happening was just too much and I began to suffer with depression and suicidal thoughts. I couldn't understand why or for how long that my mother had been suffering in silence. Why hadn't I known? We were best friends. There were times that I felt there was maybe a sign because sometimes when I would call her, I would hear her slurring her speech over the other end of the phone. I don't believe that my mother consciously tried to take her life that fateful evening. But she overdosed. And I went from feeling like the world was my oysters to sinking to my lowest point. I was lost, confused, enraged, really, because I couldn't understand the decisions made by a woman who I admired so much. Her strength had shaped me. So it was at that moment that I declared that everything was a lie. Everything in my life up to that moment was a complete lie. And I didn't know who I was anymore. I had so much guilt and shame thinking that there was something that I could have done to help her. If I was there, she wouldn't have done it. If I was there, I could have saved her. 
And it took me many years to realize that her death was not my fault. My life as I knew it became very different. And it was really strange because I was an extrovert most of my life. And then suddenly I wanted to crawl in a corner and hide. I had so much anxiety and fear that I didn't want people looking at me. I lost a tremendous amount of weight after that because I didn't feel like I was worthy of nourishment. I had literally lost my appetite for life. And it's crazy now to even say this, but I would literally walk across the street into coming traffic without looking both ways, thinking that if I got hit, so be it. And I live in New York City. <laughs> I could have gotten hit. And then as time went on, I would go out drinking until I blacked out in an attempt to disconnect and numb the pain. I became pretty reckless. I thought that I couldn't handle the pain with my newfound circumstance because no one had the same bond or could have had the same bond that I had with my mother. So how could anyone really understand my pain? So my world got smaller and smaller until I felt completely alone. I was no longer the confident, bright-eyed girl who'd walk in and light up a room. I was now a 27-year-old woman who was heartbroken, spiritually lost, spirit shattered, fighting to figure out what was the meaning of my life. And one night, I couldn't take it anymore, and I ended up on the floor of my New York City apartment with tears pouring down from my face. And I just wanted the pain to stop. And I said, God, universe, whoever you are, whoever's out there, I need help, and I need it now. And I feel really happy that I can stand before you here today and say that that evening marked the beginning of a long journey of healing and transformation. But that was also when I recognized that there was a much bigger problem. And that problem was not just merely depression. It was the stigmas associated with having depression. No one wants to talk about the elephant in the room. And I get it. I was guilty of that as well. For years, I didn't want to talk about how my mother passed away because I was ashamed. And I didn't want other people judging me or my family. And I certainly didn't want them to disrespect my mother or dishonor her legacy. And I thought that if I shared my truth, I would be destined to repeat it. So I feared my truth, and I just compartmentalized my feelings, and I pretended that I was okay. But really, I was broken inside. So I alienated myself from my family and friends and began to retreat. And one of the main reasons why we need to talk about depression is because untreated depression will only get worse. And it can lead to suicide. And while suicide is a preventable public health problem, it is still one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Every 30 seconds, someone somewhere in the world takes their own life. Just imagine how many more lives are shattered by that one loved person choosing to take their life. It's a ripple effect, and it actually destroys families. It destroyed mine. But it doesn't have to. Because if we, if we stop looking at depression as something that we don't feel equipped or comfortable enough to, to talk about, then some of the symptoms of depression could be much better managed. A depressed or mentally ill person does not have a contagious disease. So why do we treat them like they have leprosy? Why, as a culture, are we just so afraid to go near someone with it? Depression does not discriminate. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, what you look like, how intelligent you are. Depression is a disease like many others, and getting better requires getting the appropriate help. 
And getting the appropriate help is exactly what saved me from myself. After getting the professionals that were able to equip my situation, I then began going to group therapy every week without fail. And I started to see a spiritual mentor at my church. And it was through the group and through the conversation where I realized that I was not alone in my suffering, that this was real for other people too. So what do you think it is why we don't get help? Is it fear that people think we're crazy? Is it fear that our friends and our family members may shut us out? Is it fear that will be talked about behind our backs? Because I recently shared my story on social media and it was a really interesting response. No one wanted to engage at all with my posts. No likes, no comments, nothing. But my inbox was getting flooded with messages and people sharing that they too had similar struggles. So I asked them, well, why aren't you responding to the post? I would love it if we had this conversation on a platform. And everyone said, oh, no, 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 I, I couldn't. Because then everyone would see. Everyone could see my post on your page. So we've come a really long way in the field of depression and suicide prevention, but we still have a long way to go because there are many taboo encrusted stigmas that are still present today. So let's start a conversation. It's only through open, honest dialogue that we are ever going to be able to overcome the stigmas that are attached with depression. I started a podcast about a year ago for this very reason, because I wanted to create a space for unapologetic truth-telling, places where people can come and share their story. Because there's a lot of power in sharing. Our stories touch different people. My story may speak to you, and your story may speak to you, and so on. But we must break the silence. We all have different experiences, and our experiences shape our voice and our purpose. So I say, let your mess be your message. Because at the end of the day, we're all human, right? And we're all here just living in this human condition. And without the pain, how would you fully experience joy? And if you want to feel the highs, you've also got to feel the lows. And sometimes it's in our darkness where we find true light. And for anyone in this audience who is currently suffering with depression or who has suffered from depression like myself, or someone who thinks that no one else is there for them and that they're all alone, or for someone who thinks that they're shameful and they keep comparing themselves to their peers. Realize that it's absolutely okay. It's actually more normal than you think. But it's important to realize that those thoughts and emotions that you have, they don't define you because they really are not who you truly are. So when those voices come creeping in telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not worth it, that you're not capable of greatness, I want everyone to remember this. That each one of us that's in this room tonight was put here on earth and in this room for a purpose. You're more powerful than you know. And your life matters and it's worth living because you're a unique expression in the world. Our souls are as unique as our fingerprints and we all have something special to share. So I want you to remember that. So I really call on each and every one of you who, hears, it was who is here today to stand up and become a leader within your community. Many people are suffering in silence, so how do we identify a loved one who's in pain? We start by having a conversation. Now, you might not be interested in starting a podcast like I did, 
But what you can do is you can get a group of friends together once a week or once a month, and you can create a space where people can talk without judgment. Or you can reach out to that one friend or a colleague or your favorite aunt and uncle, the cool aunt or uncle, a trusted adult, and talk to them. So I have a little bit of homework for everyone. And that is, it has to be done either tonight or tomorrow, but it has to be done within 24 hours. I challenge you all to call one person that you love and tell them that you were here at this event tonight. And I want you to tell them one thing that you learned. Because I guarantee you that everyone who you speak to is going to say that they too have had similar struggles, or at least they know someone who has. Okay, and I have one more thing. I need everyone to take out their cell phones right now. Come on, Chris, come on up. And this is my call to action. So guys, you can tweet, you can take a photo, um, or you can take a selfie, whatever you wanna do, but everyone take out your phones. Chris, come on up, we're gonna do a little uh, selfie stick. And I want you guys to post it on social media, wherever you feel comfortable, using this hashtag, and I believe it's gonna be right over here. It's about life. And I also want you to do at lifeact underscore N-E Ohio. Because this is how we start the conversation, and this is how we start the healing process. So remember guys, life is a gift. And let's, let's make a movement online Let's make a movement about living and a movement about healing. Thank you. Get in here.